Okay. So, today we are going to discuss the carding process. Carding is a very, very important process and the quality of the final yarn that we produce is very much dependent on the quality of carding. Hence, in the industry, people take lot of interest on the carding process. Let us understand what are the objectives of carding. Now, the objectives are carding is individualization of fiber tufts followed by cleaning of fiber stock, extraction of fiber clusters or neps which are present in the feed material, mixing of fibers and production of an assembly of random array of fibers which we call sliver. Now, the question comes, why do you need these objectives? What is the purpose? Now, if we go to the very first objective, individualization of fiber tufts, this is required mainly to produce a very uniform yarn. The more the fibers are separated and open out, the more uniform the yarn would be. We have to make sure that there is no clusters of fiber present in the final yarn. Next come cleaning of fiber stock. This is essential to produce a clean fault free yarn. The fiber stock especially cotton contains lot of impurities and almost 50 percent of the impurities still are left in the tufts after the blow room operations. So, whatever is left, we want to clean it further and cutting is a very, very efficient machine for cleaning finer trash particles and sucking out the dust particles. The next important objective is extraction of fiber clusters and neps. Neps are tiny cluster of fibers. These neps are produced during ginning stages and also produced during blow room operations. Now, these neps are detrimental to the quality of the yarn and therefore, we have to ensure how to get rid of them. So, the carding machine will be able to remove part of these neps and also if there are any clusters of fibers which are present in the feed material that is also removed by the carding machine. The next one is mixing of fibers. The mixing of fibers will average out the variation in fiber characteristics which is present in the feed material and therefore, it will give us a yarn with consistent quality. And the last objective is production of an assembly of random array of fiber. This is required because such an assembly is ideally suited for easy manipulation into a yarn. To produce a yarn, what we need? A random array of fibers and carding machine will be arranging the separated fibers in a beautiful nice array and this array is further manipulated in terms of stretching to produce the final yarn. Now, from here, if we go to the operations involved in carding, 
for different objectives that we have already listed. Now, objective individualization of fiber tufts and this would need dividing fiber tufts into smaller ones and smaller ones to individual separate fibers in successive stages. Then clearing of fiber stock that is elimination of trash particle, dust, dirt and seed cores. This is done through separation and elimination by centrifugal force. The separation is done by interactive pin covered surfaces. Then extraction of fiber clusters and naps. The operation is disentanglement of the clusters or the naps by the interacting pin covered surfaces and their elimination by centrifugal force. Then comes objective mixing of fibers and this is done by fractional collection of fibers on a part of the machine called tougher and returning part of the fibers back to the feed point and by this process we will be able to mix the fibers repeatedly on cylinder. The last objective is production of an assembly of random array of fibers. This is done by collection of the separated fibers followed by their removal and transformation into an one dimensional assembly called sliver. So, the machine will be doing the operations which are listed here and we will study how these operations are carried out. To start with, let us see what are the fundamental actions in a card. There are two important actions. We call it carding action and stripping actions. Let us see what is carding and what is stripping. The condition for carding actions is art follows. First we need two sawtooth covered surfaces termed as A and B. Next, these two surfaces should be close to each other that the distance between the interacting surfaces should be close to 0.3 millimeter. Then the sawtooth points we also call it wire points of both the interacting surfaces should be inclined with inclination direction opposite to each other as shown in the diagram. The surfaces should move either in the same or opposite directions. However, if they move in the same directions, the surface charged with material should move at a faster speed in the direction of inclination of the short teeth. In the present case, if the lower surface carry the material that is surface B to the carding zone where actual separation between the fibers takes place, then the speed of V 1 should be much greater than the speed of V 2. What we see here that the two surfaces are there A and B, both of them move in the same directions. The teeth points are inclined opposite to each other. The lower surface which carry the unopened tiny tufts of fibers will move at a faster speed than the top surface which will move at a slower speed. The inclination angle alpha of the front edge of the tooth should be such that cot alpha 1 should be greater than mu where mu is the fiber to tooth coefficient of friction. Now, why cot alpha should be greater than mu? 
let us try to understand this. Now, here there is a diagram where we can see only two teeth are interacting with each other. Now, there is a fiber shown in red color which is picked up by these two teeth and the surface B is moving in one direction, then surface A is moving in the other direction. Either they move in the same direction or they can move in the opposite direction. As I have told that in case they move in the same direction, in that case the lower surface in the present case must move faster than the top surface. Okay. Now, let us say there is a fiber which is gripped by both the teeth and let the tension that acts on the fiber be R. Now, R the tension can be resolved into two components P 1 and P 2, where P 1 is R sin alpha 1, where alpha 1 is the angle of the front edge of the saw tooth with respect to the base. The other component P 2 is R cos alpha 1. So, what we see here that P 1 is perpendicular with respect to the edge of the tooth and P 2 is acting towards the base. Now, for the carding action to be effective, P 2 has to be greater than mu P 1. That is, P 2 should be able to overcome the frictional resistance that P 1 is going to offer to the fiber. So, a situation has to be created, so that the fiber is made to move towards the base of the tooth. And to achieve that, if P 2 happens to be more than mu P 1, then we can write that R cos alpha 1 should be greater than R sin alpha 1. And from here, we can write that cot alpha 1 has to be greater than mu. That means, to have an effective carding actions, the cot value of the angle alpha must be greater than mu, where mu is the coefficient of friction between the fiber and the tooth front edge. Similar situation will occur for the top surface as well and for that cot alpha 2 has to be greater than mu. In such situations, the fiber will move towards the base and as the two teeth are moving away from each other, the fiber will be teased out. Now, based on this uh, analysis, we can see that how the angular inclination of the teeth varies with the coefficient of friction. Now, there are three fibers which is shown here in the table, fiber cotton, wool and polyester. The coefficient of friction between the steel and the fiber is 0.27 for cotton, 0.23 for wool and 0 0.40 for polyester. And the corresponding angle of alpha can be seen to be here for cotton it has to be less than 75 degree, wool has to be less than 77 degree and polyester is has to be less than 68 degree. So, this is a very simple way to understand that the inclination angle of the front edge of the teeth should be always less than 90 degree. Now, we go to the next action that is stripping action. So, what are the conditions for stripping action? Here is a diagram showing 
two surfaces and the teeth are saw tooth in shape like the previous one. The again the distance between the interacting surfaces has to be very close to each other and generally they are close to 0.3 millimeter. Tooth points of both the interacting surfaces should be inclined in the same direction. So, this is little different from the previous one. For stripping that is one surface is carrying fibers, the other surface will strip the fibers from the previous surface and carry the surface along with it. And hence what we need is that the two tooth points of both the interacting surfaces should be inclined in the same direction. The surfaces may move either in the same direction or in the opposite directions. If they move in the same direction, the speed of the surface receiving the material should be greater than the other. This we must keep it in mind. Now, let us see an analysis of stripping happening on an isolated fiber. We see the look at this diagram. So, we see there is one single fiber which is in red color and there are two teeth interacting with each other. The fiber is grip in between them. Now, in this case the difference between the inclination angle of the front edge and the wedge that is alpha minus theta of the tooth being stripped should be such that cot beta or cot alpha minus theta should be greater than mu. Look at this diagram carefully and find out which are the alpha, beta and theta. So, the angle theta is known as wedge angle. Alpha is the angle of inclination with respect to the base. Now, these two angles are very, very important for stripping and the angle beta which is basically is the difference between alpha and theta. This angle should be greater than mu. Now, if we want to go for the proof of this, we can look at this analysis again. Let the fiber shown in the diagram be acted by a force R that is R is the tension on the fiber and in a similar way we can resolve this tension on the fiber to two components S 1 and S 2. Where S 1 will be R sin beta and S 2 will be R cos beta. For stripping to be effective, what should happen? S 2 has to be greater than mu S 1. That is the force which is acting away from the teeth that is the S 2. This force should be able to overcome the frictional resistance that the fiber is going to experience because of the normal force mu s 1 which is acting on it. So, if s 2 has to be more than mu s 1 that basically means r cos beta should be greater than mu r sin beta and therefore, cot beta must be greater than mu that is the angle beta or the difference between the angle alpha and theta should be more than the coefficient of friction between the fiber and the tooth. Now, we will see the configuration of a carding machine. Now, carding machine is a big machine. There are many, many elements in the machine. 
and we can see the machine having four different sections. One is the feed section of the machine followed by carding section followed by a sliver formation unit and then a packaging unit. So, the entire machine has four segments feed segment, carding segment, sliver formation segment and packaging segment. So, let us see the working principle and the construction of this machine. A schematic diagram of the carding machine is shown in this diagram and this is like a cross sectional view of the machine and we are showing the various sections from the left hand end to the liquor end point, we will get to know them slowly. This section is known as the feed section of the machine. Then we can see the entire cylinder. This part is the carding section followed by sliver formation section and then this part is the packaging unit. And here is the big drum we call it cylinder, then there is another little smaller drum, we call it doffer, there are another small drum, we call it tekarin or also this is also known as liquorin unit and then we have a packaging unit and the package is known as a can. then the tapped feeding is being shown on the left hand side in the feed section and we can see the web doffing unit also. Now, let us understand a bit about this machine. The feed section consists of a tapped feeding unit in the present case. There are machines where the top feeding unit may not be there and we feed what is known as a lap, a lap which is produced in blow room and the modern machines are mostly equipped with top feeding units. And then in the carding segments, we have mainly a cylinder and the cylinder is surrounded by many elements. On the top, we have flats, we will discuss about them in more details later on and at the bottom, we have cylinder under casing that is the bottom part of the cylinder is covered by under casings. The entire cylinder surface is filled with large number of pins. Then once we go from we will discuss more about the cylinder in future. Then what comes is the doffer. Doffer is also a cylindrical drum and there are large number of pins on its surface and from doffer, the material which comes on the doffer goes to a unit and this is known as wave doffing unit. And from wave doffing unit, the wave that we get, the fiber wave that we get is converted into a round shape product, we call it sliver. And once the sliver is made, the sliver is packed into the can. 
So the way the machine works is that the from the feed sections either a lap or a collection of tufts are fed by a feeding feed roller and from the feed roller the material goes to a small drum we call it tegarin or ligarin. This tegarin or ligarin also will be having a large number of pins on its surface. This tegarin will be able to tease out the tufts and will produce small size tuftlets and these tuftlets which are produced by this tegarin is then passed on to the cylinder surface. Now, while doing so, lot of trash particles get ejected at this tegarin feed point and the ejected trash particles are collected below the machine. So, that part of the cleaning is done at this point. We will learn more about them in future lectures and the tuplets are then fed to the cylinder and the cylinder with large number of pins will be acting on the tuplets. There is a huge differences in speed between the tegarin and the cylinder. The speed difference will basically facilitate the spreading out of the fiber over a large surface area and by doing so the fibers will be separated out from each other. Now, once these tuplets are passed on to the cylinder, the cylinder which is rotating in a clockwise direction in the present case will be acted by the teeth of the flats and between the cylinder points and the flat wire points, there will be tremendous teasing actions or we call it curding actions between the flat and the cylinder wire points and which will separate out the fibers or individualize the fibers to almost single fiber stage. And so, once it is done, these separated out fibers are then brought near the doffer surface. While doing so, part of the fibers will be passed on to the flat and the flat we will learn about them in more details later on. The flats also move slowly in the forward directions and they keep on collecting the trash particles which are thrown towards them by the cylinder and the centrifugal force which is acting on the trash particles which will cause them to be thrown towards the flats and the flats will be absorbing these trash particles and therefore, also help in cleaning. This material then reaches the doffer surface and the doffer will be able to collect these fibers, but whatever reaches doffers part of it is not part of it is actually transferred to the cylinder. That is whatever material is approaching doffer the entire material is not transferred to the doffer immediately part of it returns and this return fiber layer joins the tegarin or the liquorin at the feed point. So, they get mixed up with the freshly fed fibers and both the freshly fed fibers as well as the fibers returned because not being able to get transferred to the doffer, they go together and get carded between cylinder and flat. So, this process goes on repeatedly and therefore, the same material gets carded number of times and hence separations or individualizations takes place. 
whatever is transferred to the doffer, this material is then moves forward. The doffer moves as has been shown in the diagram in an anti-clockwise direction and the material is brought. Now, the doffer is having large number of pins on them. Therefore, we have to somehow remove the fibers from the surface of the doffer. So, that are, there is a small unit called wave doffing unit. This doffing unit will be able to strip off the doffer surface and the fibers in the form of a thin sheet will move forward. This thin sheet of fibers is known as wave. The wave is very thin and a little no, strength in them. They are basically very fragile also. So, at very high speed, the air current which is generated around doffer or around wave doffing unit may sometimes disturb this thin sheet and therefore, we need to quickly consolidate the sheet and transform them in the form of a round shape material which we call sliver. We will learn about the uh, wave removal and transformation of the wave into a round shape sliver in some other lectures. Once the sliver is made, the only job that is left is to pack it in the form of a coils within a package that is known as can is like a hollow cylinder within which we pack the material and once the can gets filled up, these cans is removed and is replaced by another new can and in this manner the process continues for hours together till we find something going wrong with the process and we stop the machine to find out what has gone wrong and take appropriate actions or we generally stop the machine when there is a need for some maintenance uh, activity. So, with this let us stop today. This is the very first lesson about the carding process. Thank you.